there's this added layer in the political discourse and in the media that is dividing us. You actually have a really great political tool here and don't, don't, let it, don't let it escape you. There are people who were at Occupy who then became Trump supporters you know, because they're tired with, of the, the economic system. They're tired of the institutions. They feel betrayed, they feel abandoned. So then you see a populist, he's a different kind of populist, you know, a strongman kind of personality in Donald Trump, and he's an outsider. And people really want that. They want somebody who they think will challenge the, the status quo. So that's why I think Bernie Sanders on the left and Donald Trump on the right became so popular. Today, we have an enlightening conversation with Margot Paez from the Bitcoin Policy Institute. We explore how Bitcoin has drawn individuals from across the political and ideological spectrum, creating a unique and diverse community. Margot highlights Bitcoin as a tool that transcends political affiliations. It offers benefits to everyone, regardless of their background. She argues that Bitcoin aligns fundamental economic incentives in a way that makes it one of the few unifying forces in our increasingly divided society. Join us as Margot delves into her work at BPI and shares the surprising common ground she's found among different political parties while collaborating with a diverse array of individuals. But before we do that, I want to introduce our sponsors, Stampseed, The Orange Pill App, and Swan. Our partners are businesses and people that we respect and our products that we at Bit Intelligence personally use. You're watching 21 Voices. So at the Bitcoin Policy Institute, we cover lots of issues related to Bitcoin. Bitcoin mining is just one aspect, and that's my area and Troy Cross's area. We have economists, we have philosophers, we have people who focus on the security, national security side. We're all over the place. I, I can't even keep track anymore. We have so many fellows coming in, and it's really cool. It's really exciting, and we also we're also working on the human rights side as well. BPI works a lot with the Human Rights Foundation, Alex Gladstein there. We have a close relationship with him. So yeah, there's just so much going on. And I mean, Bitcoin is just multidisciplinary from the get-go. So we have to try to cover as much as we can. But, but yeah, it's a, it's a very diverse group. Uh, we have a diversity of political opinions. So I'm more you know, in the progressive left camp in terms of my political beliefs, but we also have people who are way more conservative. We also have libertarians, we have people in between. So I think that's really cool because it shows that we're committed really to getting the core message out about Bitcoin and we can do it in a way where we transcend political differences. And I think that that's really important. I think we need to show people that it is possible to work on a project and not be divided by these smaller differences. Working in the Bitcoin space has really showed me that it's possible to work with people who have different political views, but it has also shown me that actually, at the fundamental level, we have way more in common than that we realize. And most people, whether they voted for Donald Trump or Joe Biden or some other candidate, Actually, most people care about the planet, they care about their community, and they want to see more sustainability in their everyday life. They want to see a, a return to that local community. They want to see more mom and pop shops. They want to have a, a good standard of living, and they don't want to see the planet destroyed either. And even if they think climate change is just a top-down, hoax to control people, which some people do think that, those same people will still agree with you like, yeah, we need regenerative farming, we need to improve our soil, we need local farming, we need to bring it back to that level. First of all, it blew my mind the first time when I started interacting with people like that. But then I found that really helpful because what that means is there's this added layer in the political discourse and in the media that is dividing us so if we can find a, a common ground, then we can get beyond those divisions and we might actually be able to have real solutions. And I think Bitcoin is one way for us to find that common ground. Because everybody sees that there's problems, whether they're, whatever their political 
orientation is. Like everybody sees pretty much the same problems and they're all feeling it for the most part in the same way. It's just that there's these super visual divisions that are keeping us from having common ground and working towards a solution that works for everybody else. And it, it means, it does mean there's some amount of compromise and, and also willingness to allow people to just find their way to solve that problem. And I think we've lost that also in the way we do politics. We rely too much on top down and forcing people, you know, more stick than carrot in that approach. And I think the reality is when you have people with a lot of different opinions, but still a lot of common ground is you kind of kind of have to give them more carrot. You got to give them the incentives to do the right thing or just let them do it their way. You know, let them build those communities the way that they want to. And I, I think actually we would solve a lot more problems. When I was reporting on the Occupy movement, I remember doing a video one day. I realized in that moment that there was this problem that was fundamental and that there were these symptoms to the problem and, and people were feeling the symptoms and sometimes it manifested in different ways for, for certain groups, but people were, were seeing that and, and I think that the political solutions were trying to address symptoms rather than the root cause. So if we can get to that root cause with the financial system, then we can actually improve things for everyone, whatever your, your political view is. But the way our politics has been working since the 70s at least has been on the slow decline and the you know, this income disparities that are growing and the debt that is the debt burden on people. You know, when in 2008 when the financial crisis hit, that was more than just a recession. You know, there was really a break and a crack that was revealed in our financial system and I think people that was like the first time that people really saw that and you know there were Bitcoiners at the Occupy movement I saw them I have a video and I have a photo actually that I took of a Bitcoin sticker on somebody's suitcase that they had brought so they were there right and and interesting enough there are people who were at Occupy who then became Trump supporters you know, because they're tired with of the, the economic system, they're tired of the institutions, they feel betrayed, they feel abandoned. So then you see a populist, he's a different kind of populist, you know, a strongman kind of personality in Donald Trump, and he's an outsider. And people really want that. They want somebody who they think will challenge the, the status quo. So that's why I think Bernie Sanders on the left and Donald Trump on the right became so popular, because really that is what people are feeling deep down inside, whether they acknowledge it openly or not, is that they really want somebody to challenge the system because it's not working for them anymore. And in Bitcoin, we see it as it's the financial system. Let's, let's go right after them. Let's go at the money, the root of the, the source, right? At least we can start flipping some incentives because of how Bitcoin works. That's a scarce resource, scarce commodity versus dollar, fiat money. You know, you can basically print as much as you want, you can create as much debt as you want to finance stuff, and that becomes prob problematic down the line for future generations. Bitcoin fundamentally is tied back to that financial crisis, to the Occupy movement, and everybody, I think everybody really wants to see the same thing happen. It's just getting them past the propaganda and the misinformation, getting them to see you actually have a really great political tool here and don't don't let it don't let it escape you don't let it just become a store value for the wealthy you know it's still something that you can use it's still powerful for people for average people all you got to do is you know just buy a little bit for now get learn how how it works and see how you can make the most of it in your life to help you get ahead of these challenges and the real horrible things that are happening in society, right? If everybody came together and really worked on that, I mean, I don't, I don't know, it would be incredible. It would really scare people in power. Please bear with us for a quick message from our sponsors. These videos take a lot of time to make, and we've partnered with brands we trust like Stampseed and the Orange Pill app in order to get the funding we need to bring you these videos every week. Don't store your Bitcoin in cold storage without stamping your seed phrase on an indestructible titanium plate. Stampseed is fireproof, rust-proof, impact-proof, and easy to hide. 
It has no loose parts and will give you ultimate peace of mind that your Bitcoin is safe and sound for the long term. Click the link in the description below for 15% off your stamping kit. When I finally got Bitcoin, it hit me like a lightning bolt. It was the currency of the future, the only money that truly mattered. But there was a problem. I didn't know anyone else that thought like me. That is until I discovered the Orange Pill app. Suddenly I was connected with a network of like-minded Bitcoin enthusiasts right in my own city. The Orange Pill app is more than just a social network. It's a community of passionate individuals determined to change the world one Satoshi at a time. This series is brought to you by Swan and created by Bit Intelligence. Remember to like this video and subscribe to both our channels for more videos like this every week. Thanks for watching. There's some people in government who are afraid of Bitcoin and they kind of sense that it means that you can't control money in the same way that you could and can lead to these second order, second order effects. But I think most people are really ignorant of the power that they can have from using Bitcoin. Part of that is because there's a lot of media propaganda against Bitcoin in the same way that we saw with nuclear. And it turning, it's turning people against something that they could benefit from. We're also a really small group of people who get this and it's very different from the way we think about money and we think about society. So we do seem a little crazy. But if we can, if we can reach more people and show them the everyday ways that Bitcoin is working, I'm hopeful that we can turn some people around and get them to, to see the world a little differently and, and maybe make a really positive change in society. There's people who do not have access to electricity in the way that we do in the West or in, these, in wealthier industrial countries. So we take for granted the fact that we can just flip a switch on and the lights turn on, right? We have a refrigerator. We can go to the hospital and they can refrigerate their medicine and they can treat basic conditions and we don't even we have life support. That's something that doesn't exist in, in many parts of the world. But if you can use Bitcoin as a base load revenue stream, you can actually jumpstart the development of that infrastructure and the production of the electricity on these small grids these mini grids and a lot of them for example with what gridless is doing they're tied to hydropower plants and these plants they're fairly environmentally safe because they're smaller they don't do they don't have the same kind of environmental footprint but they're enough to power a small grid for a local community and if you you tie a you know a, a box of bitcoin miners a metal, big metal box of bitcoin miners to that now you're generating revenue and that's going to reduce the tariffs. And while you're waiting for the community to start buying the products that to actually plug in, you know, because you have to do that. So you got to buy the fridge, you got to buy the light bulbs, or you got to install the electrical lines. While, while you're waiting for all that, you are paying, you already have somebody paying for that electricity. So that can actually help us solve a really big problem and, and one of the reasons why I think it's so cool and so powerful is because a really big problem with investment in the global south is that you've got to, you often have to sell something to foreigners in order to get something back. Or you have these Western foreigners come in and make all these claims and then they don't do what they promise to do. So there's a lot of corruption and then there's government corruption as well. So with Bitcoin mining, you can sidestep that. You can educate people in the community to do it themselves. You don't have to work too closely with the government to do it either. You don't have to trust that that third party investor is gonna do the right thing. So I think that's really powerful and it, it's the thing, one of the things that I'm most hopeful about is to see this really take off in the global south and to see Bitcoin miners really help address energy poverty and do it in a way where, where it's environmentally beneficial as well. It's just like one of the, the greatest and exciting things that, that I see happening right now in the space. In this discussion, we've uncovered how Bitcoin is bridging divides and revolutionizing our economic understanding. 
In the West, we often take our prosperity and energy abundance for granted. But in the global South, the need for energy and investment is critical. Unfortunately, this investment often comes at the cost of exploiting a country's resources, leading to an unsustainable debt burden from organizations like the IMF and World Bank. Bitcoin is already helping some regions bypass this exploitative system. As Margot suggests, by reaching more people and demonstrating the practical ways Bitcoin is making a difference today, we might inspire a shift in perspective that leads to meaningful and positive change. Stay tuned and remember to subscribe for the latest recaps, insights, and films about all things Bitcoin. This is 21 Voices. If you want to watch another episode, try this one here.